Greetings, dear friends. Get your Bible. We're looking into the Word. I've been all this week on this broadcast in one verse. Get your Bible. Go with me through that verse once again as I read it. Because it's very, very important. It's in Romans 5, verse 15. It says, But not as the offense. That is, somebody offended. Somebody created an offense. We're not to be that. But as the offense. Who is the issue in an offense? It's old Adam. It's Adam back in the garden when time started. But not as the offense. What happened back in the garden? A man and a woman first created creatures. In that garden, were told by the devil they'd be as gods. If they disobeyed the God before them, they could be just like God themselves. That's the offense. But there was a free gift that come. That's another man. As we said, the words in Romans 5 are directed at two men, actually. But only one of them is mentioned at a time. One of them that's mentioned at a time is Adam. The other that is mentioned at a time is Christ. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. I preach a hard message. I don't preach a message from a book that everybody's excited with. No. A great book excitement today in the world is getting the latest Bible. Getting the latest Bible that has all the helps in it. Somebody said to me one time, you sure must get a lot of help out of your Bible. I don't have written helps there, but I get a lot of help out of studying the Scriptures because my helper is the Holy Spirit. I don't get a lot of help out of listening to preachers because very few preachers will even make the statement that Christ lives in humanity. Every once in a while I hear one make that statement, but they stop right there. They stop right there. They ought to explain that. How in the world does Christ live in you? Because you've been joined to him. You have his spirit in you. His spirit is you. The real you is Christ's spirit. That's what a Christian is. We have many people that have come to that idea. They've come to this place where Christ is all in all. You understand that, dear friend? I want to help you to understand it. Do you see this verse? It says, by one man, the world has received the gift of grace. One man. Everything that God tried to get people to live by over 4,000 years of the Old Testament failed. It failed. So good to study the Old Testament, people think. But the Old Testament needs to be studied for one reason, that the failure of humanity throughout 4,000 years of God's time from his creation 
to the cross needs to be studied because God's going to do something about the failure of humanity at the cross. At the cross. Little songs about the cross come to me. At the cross I was saved, going to hell, but I saved. That's just a small part of what the cross is about. An important part. There's only one scripture, Christ died for our sins. That's the scripture you ought to believe in most of all and first of all. But there are a hundred more things that happened at the cross. Things that were taken care of that God needed to take care of. Like the law. The law was stopped at the cross. The fulfillment of the law was Jesus Christ and he hang on the cross and he died with the cross taking care of the law. Many, many are coming to that conclusion. I've had the privilege in the last 40 years to preach this message around the world. Everywhere. It has been a great moment. Because in most places around the world, they're open. They are open to what the scriptures say. In America, we're no longer open to what the scriptures say. We're open to what somebody says about the scriptures. Which may be the person missing entirely what they ought to be getting out of the scriptures. As I said in a broadcast some time ago, that the scriptures are there available for people to interpret them. But the word of God is not interpretative. Interpretative. It's not, in, it's not at the will of a human being to interpret the scriptures. You can change, you can change the scriptures like you'd like to see them. But when it comes to the Word of God, that's something unchangeable. Why? Because the Word of God is a person. The person of this book. That's who That's who Christ is. That's what Christ is. He's the person of our new life. Our new life is not an old sinner, sinner getting saved and start living for God and start making money and owns a big business and, and uh, start helping people around the world. That's not Christianity. That's okay. That's what we all ought to do and will do as Christians. But why do I make a point of that? We failed in the simplest part of the Christian life. We talk about inviting Christ to come into our heart. I think there's a scripture that says that. But we don't talk about him becoming our life. Paul would say, the life I now live is Christ. Not like Christ. That's that's a new fad we've got in religion these days. They all want to be like Jesus. That isn't what God wants. That isn't what the scriptures teach. God wants you to be whom he created you to be. He created every human to be something for his glory. What does God want? He wants you to be that. But when the time comes that you accept Jesus, you don't just accept him into your heart. You accept him as your new life. Paul says, the life I now live is Christ. How do you beat around the bush with that? Well, Paul is a big talker. Paul's a right talker. This is why I come bringing you 
the everlasting truth. The message I bring to you will still be exercised in heaven. The message I preach will still be studied in the Father's house. Not what I teach about it, but what I teach from it. From the scriptures. I can't afford this late a time for humanity to live and die. I can't afford to preach anything less to you than the scriptures as they have been written. I can't argue. I got big books right here at arm's length from me. Wonderful books about the King James. How when people start changing it, they change God's message. I believe that. I believe that. But I'm not selling Bibles. That's not my mission. My mission is not to sell Bibles. My mission is to get people into the Word of God and see Jesus. Get into the Word of God. As our text says, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ. That's what I want you to see. I want you to see Christ as your life. He didn't make a Christ out of you. When Christ came to live in you, He didn't make you a God. You're not a deity. You're not somebody more important then than you were before. You're just the same old human being. But you needed a new life. And God was not in the business of correcting lives. And so he put Christ's spirit in you, Christ in you, as your hope of glory. That's what he did. He put Christ in you. He wasn't going to let you stumble and fumble through life messing around with, well, is this the truth? Is the preacher all right? He's sure getting out on a limb. Is this church the good church? I see a lot of bad things going on, a lot of people getting in trouble. What shall I believe? You should get back into the Scriptures, into the Word of God. Get back there to the place that writes about you. Now, this is what bothers people. They don't like me to talk like this because they like to think the whole Bible is to them. You couldn't be more mistaken. Everything God said to Noah is not to you. Everything God said to Abraham is not to you. Everything God said to David is not to you. Not to you is anything, anybody great or any important writing in the Old Testament is to you. Now, the scripture on this says, all scripture is for us. But not all Scripture is to us. And I'm living in a day when I think people have been so misled and so much commingled gospel has been given to them that they don't know the truth. They don't know the truth. I heard about a group of people whose church split. They argued and fussed about it so much. And so a group of them decided that they were just going to go out and find that kind of church they wanted. You know what they did? They went to a cultist church. A cult church that was started by man. Talking to angels. They went to that church and joined it. Why? Like Eve of old. That's the best thing we've heard about. That's the prettiest thing I've seen. That's the nicest thing I've heard about. What about us? Us human beings. What's left for us? If we can go and do anything of our own will, we don't know the cross. Because the own, our own will died at the cross. He died. But the last line of this 12th, 15th verse in Romans 5 says, Christ hath abounded unto many. 
So there's some here in the, the gospel. There's some that take in the gospel like it's spoken of in this book. Some people have that lie. And I got to go now. My time is up. Thank you for listening. Thank you for trusting God with me that we can get this message out to the whole world. Love every one of you. God love you till we meet together again. Bye-bye.